Welcome to This Week Health. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels dedicated to keeping health IT staff current and engaged. Today, we have an interview in action from the 2023 Spring Conferences Vive in Nashville and HIMSS in Chicago. Special thanks to our partners, CDW, Rubric, Sectra, and Trellix for choosing to invest in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. You can check them out on our website, thisweekhealth.com. Now, on to this interview. All right, here we are, another interview in action, and it would not be a Chime Vive event without catching up with Mari Savickas with Chime. What's your official title? I mean, I answer to hey you. Yes. I mean, usually. What's your unofficial title then? <laughs> My unofficial <laughs> title is hey you. I am the vice president of public policy for Chime, so I head up our government affairs. You hang out on the hill and keep tabs on what's going on. I mean, kind of. I mean, it's the pandemic's been right. hard. It's, it's, You're yeah, not. It's yeah. remote now. Yeah, it's weird. It's still weird. But you, you are keeping up to yeah, speed on are. what's going on. I mean, so yeah. what's top of mind right now? Cybersecurity, job one, every day of time. So that's our top advocacy issue. It continues to be. So today happens to be the day that is the effective date for a very important piece of legislation. It was in the omnibus, which for those of you who are like, what the heck is the omnibus? It was the funding package for fiscal year 23. Yes, I know the fiscal year starts on October 1st and we're late, that's Congress. So it funded it and included in it was the Patch Act. If you know what the Patch Act is, go to your local browser and look it up. So today is the first day and there's a notice in the Federal Register, full disclosure, it was published this morning at 845, I haven't read it. However, this is where like the rubber is gonna meet the road and there's gonna be greater oversight of medical device manufacturers by the FDA, set in short. Interesting. Yeah, big deal, right? From, from a cybersecurity from a, Yes, sorry, from a cybersecurity standpoint. So the Patch Act is interesting. So the problem we've always had with these medical devices is actually the FDA was part of the problem, right? So they said, Initially. this is FDA approved. And then we would say, hey, it's running Windows NT or Windows 95 or Windows 98. And they'd say, yeah, you can't touch it. It's FDA approved. If you patch those, it. Those days are over. Those days are over. So anytime you're going to get some sort of excuse that says, oh, you're going to break our FDA clearance. No, that's you're going to end up in the naughty house if you do that. How are they going to oversee this? So as a CIO, as a CISO who oversees, I mean, I don't remember the number of devices, but it's in the thousands of devices that we were overseeing yeah. that are our biomed devices and whatnot. Now, the good news is today, there's a lot of really good tools out there. There's Order, there's Medigate, there's Armis. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of tools that will tell you, we couldn't even get an accurate inventory back in the day. Well, but we're going to be yeah. required to do that now, I would assume. Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, I think that providers struggle because I, I'm not the technical person. I relay what they tell me. They say we struggle with asset inventory. It is a huge issue is knowing what's on your network. Right. So that is obviously under the purview. However, if you don't have a software bill of materials, you're not really sure what's going on. So this is going to tighten this up, right? And they're going to have to put this stuff on the FDA website. They're going to have to put more things in reporting when they're submitting for their pre-market. There's a whole bunch of more oversight that's coming to bear. And the FDA actually for the past two years, maybe even more, has asked Congress like, hey, could you give us some more authority? Hey, pretty please, Mr. Grown Talk, can we have more authority? And guess what? Their wishes and dreams have come true. I mean, this is very important. And so I think this is the start of the implementation of the statute. And again, I haven't read the notice yet, but there are things in there, like there's actually teeth to this. There's fines associated with non-compliance. Back to your original question, like how does this affect my members? It will make the job of the CIO and the CISO's life a little bit easier. Easier, right. Because, yeah. I mean, certain health systems, you just go in, they understand security, and you say, hey, we need funding for this, and they say yes. But the reason you have to have a bill like this or have it attached to the omnibus bill is because too many health systems are saying, yeah, we'll get to that when we're required to get to it. And so as a, a CIO, I know that kind of backstop is helpful. Now I walk in and go, look, we have to do this. So there's a lot of reasons why hospitals, health system providers may not necessarily be doing like everything, I'm air quoting everything they should be doing around cybersecurity. It would be disingenuous for me to suggest that there aren't some who are not paying enough attention. That's certainly an issue. However, there's also like resources. I mean, we didn't have enough resources before the pandemic. You know workforce. I, I keep saying like, if you can't have the clinicians showing up for work, no one's going to care about cybersecurity because they can't even keep their doors open. Right. So we have a lot of financial constraints. That's one thing that we're 
fighting for. I mean, I think it's going to be a really tough year on Capitol Hill because they want to go back to pre-pandemic funding levels. Some of the Republicans do. And so it's going to present challenges across the entire like economy. Who's going to get that extra money? We, of course, would like to see some resources for providers because it comes down to patient safety and national security. But are we going to be successful? I don't know. I think it's a really, really hard. I think it's really hard to get money this year for anything. So, but I have to just, if you know, if you sit here and like wallow in your misery of like what you didn't get, you're not celebrating like the incremental things that we did get. And so the Patch Act is a good thing. And so it will help. But I mean, we're going to have to navigate this. And HHS and Congress, even Senator Warner, who's the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, yeah. is very focused on cyber. They're looking at standards, aka mandates. And we are willing to accept mandates because frankly, we probably need them. However, it's going to be really hard, and I mean really, really hard, to impose that without some sort of financial assistance because it is a shared responsibility. All right, we'll get back to our show in just a minute. We're excited. We have a great webinar for you in May, on May 4th at 1 o'clock Eastern time. It is part of our leadership series on modern data strategies in healthcare. In this webinar, we're going to explore data-driven approaches to healthcare and how they can improve patient outcomes, increase efficiency, and reduce costs, which are also critical at this time in this juncture in healthcare. Our expert speakers will explore data governance, analytic strategies, anything that can help healthcare providers gain actionable insights from healthcare data. We would love to have you there and we're excited about it. You can register on our website, just hit the leadership series, Modern Data Strategies. It's going to be in the top right hand corner of our website, thisweekhealth.com. You can discover how we are going to use data to be more efficient, effective in the modern healthcare system. We'd love to have you join us. Again, hit the website, thisweekhealth.com, top right hand corner, sign up today. Hope to see you there. Now, back to the show. Senator Warner is really advancing the cybersecurity. He's carrying the flag yes. right now. How much is Chime informing that? How much is our membership informing that? Well, after my three all-nighters in December to write our AK quasi-manifesto, his paper was really called that a messaging document. It was long. It was like 28 pages. So we wrote a very thoughtful and I think meaningful response back. I mean, he certainly has opened the door on a number of things, like cyber insurance, yeah, right? He's starting the he really, the whole, it was a smorgasbord of like options. And so we gave him like all of our thoughts. And I think we were thought maybe something would shake out in Q1, but we're almost the end of Q1 and it hasn't happened. But I think possibly they may be waiting to see what HHS is moving on some things. And so I think they want to see what HHS does. So there's some of that syncing up. And then the Biden administration released like their big cyber plan recently. There's a lot of irons in the fire here. Cybersecurity is job one. What's job two, three, and four? Well, I mean, on any given day, it just sort of depends, like, what would be sliding into slot two. But you know, I think we have some space on telehealth. Pandemic is ending. Everyone, pandemic is ending. It's over. May 11th, right? So the, right? Yeah, so the public health emergency dollars go away. But a lot of that was shored up last year. Yeah, so just more the policies, right? I mean, for the telehealth, the Congress extended that, those pandemic authorities, all the way through 2024. So we've a little bit more space on that in terms of like what's urgent right now. But it does change things. Like there's some flexibility around like how you deliver telehealth. Like say some mall providers using FaceTime. That stuff's going away. Like, you know, that's an OCR flexibility. So we'll be looking at that and just making sure there's so many policies that were loosened up. So that's one thing. Privacy. Any day, I mean, you know I've talked about privacy. We need a national privacy law, everyone. <laughs> we do. And that is still, I think, in play. And I think there's a growing nexus between what policymakers are doing on cyber and privacy. It hasn't yet happened. They may be looking maybe at children first, which is fine. Maybe we just start somewhere. So we look at privacy stuff. We want to make sure there's no duplication of effort when it comes to what a HIPAA covered entity would have to do. We already have a lot of stuff we have to do. Right. So there's that. There's interoperability. 21st right, century, 21st you want to ask me about that? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, 21st century cures is interesting because it feels like we're in the implementation phase. Okay. We're looking at carrots and sticks at this point. So yeah. I would assume this is top of mind if I were to walk into most health systems. But to be honest with you, when I have the conversation with CIOs, they're focused on financial pressure. They're they focused are. on. It really, I mean, honestly, that, that goes back to my original statement is like they were worried late last year when the, I guess it was EHI definition changed and now you have to comply with information blocking in a more meaningful manner. What does this mean? There's a lot of unanswered questions and there was a fair amount of hand wringing and anxiety leading up to that date. We asked the government to extend it a little bit more to provide some more clarification, they declined. It's not that surprising, but 
you know, I mean, some of this is going to have to be ironed out. And as someone who went through like the whole HIPAA implementation, if they do it the same way, you're not going to go immediately find if you do something wrong, right? It would have right. to be fairly egregious yeah. for you to really invoke that kind of wrath. So I think there'll be some lessons learned, and, and there will be some folks who do the wrong thing, and they'll have to be learning from those mistakes. But you're exactly right. Like there, every CIO I've talked to while I've been here is like financial pressure. National patient ID? Any movement there? No, the answer is hard no. On on that, guess what? We're still stuck in the same place we were. So we're examining. I'm not laughing at the, I mean, the laugh, situation. I mean, I'm sort of laughing out. at the yeah. way you said it. It's like, uh, no, that's, hard no. No, that's not. still not happening. And for the past few years, I've pushed our folks internally to say, okay, so if we can't remove Section 510, super unsexy way of saying patient identifier standard, if we can't get that removed, what else can we do? So we are looking at some things. Last year we supported some like digital pieces, digital identification pieces, which may not be specific to healthcare, but have a use case in healthcare. The banks are really into this. And who's the champion actually? Interesting, Representative Foster, same person who championed for patient ID. Nice nexus there. So we're just looking at where else we can move. And I have some irons in the fire. I'm not ready to talk about them yet, but we are looking at maybe, again, if you can't go over the mountain, go around it. Curious, is this what you thought you'd be doing when you went to college and graduated? No, no, no. I, I think I slept through social studies, just to be clear, <laughs> and I didn't care about it at all. I went in as an art major. Sometimes I feel like my creative side is a little malnourished, but you know, I mean, then I took a government affairs class in college and I got an A. I was like, okay, this works, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, I mean, it's appreciate all the work that you're doing. How's the conference been? I saw you were doing yoga. That calls into what I tell other duties as a sign. Mario, you're teaching yoga. Okay, all right. Yeah, but you so. look like you've done it before. I do. I, it's my, it's, yeah, it's what I do for fun in my spare time, but I teach on the side, just more for fun. Was that attended well or? I, well, day one was. Um, <laughs> I will let people deduce why day two was not well attended. <laughs> Shocking, I know. And then the, the Black Rose last night and the probably less attended. Did you do it this morning? I, or? No, I, I was like, I, I'm going to draw on the line. No. <laughs> just, no, no. Just first two days. Well, I, hey, I appreciate all the work that you're doing here. Thank you for your time. Oh, give me a hug, Bill. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks. Okay. Another great interview. I want to thank everybody who spent time with us at the conference. I love hearing from people on the front lines, and it's phenomenal that they've taken the time to share their wisdom and experience with the community. It is greatly appreciated. We want to thank our partners, CDW, Rubric, Sectra, and Trellix, who invest in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.